Now, we come to the two surahs. قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ الْفَلَقِ قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ النَّاسِ So, بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ الْفَلَقِ I seek refuge with the Lord of the doom. من شر ما خلق from the mischief of created things. ومن شر غاسق إذا وقف. And from the mischief of darkness as it overspreads. ومن شر النفاثات في العقد. And from the mischief of those who practice secret arts or the witchcraft and sources and all these type of people. ومن شر حاسد إذا حسد and from the mischief of the envious one as he practices envy. الإمام القيم رحمة الله عليه he wrote about these two surahs very beautiful تفسير in his great book بدائع الفوائد and there is one of the scholars he collected all the تفسير من القيم in a book and called him التفسير القيم سبحان الله when you read when you read what Ibn Qayyim rahmatullah alayh said in these, uh, about these two surahs, you see how great that Imam was and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inspired him to talk about the importance of these surahs and how these surahs will affect the Muslim life. So in Surah Al-Falaq, at the beginning, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to you, says to Muhammad at the beginning, and says to everyone, to every Muslim after that, say, قُلْ قُلْ means say. Now, one of the things that Mu'amal al-Qaddafi said in some of his kufri statements, he said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدْ قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ الْفَلَقِ قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ النَّاسِ Why you are saying قُلْ so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, say, that's it. I don't want to repeat say. So I have to say, a'udhu barab al-falaq, a'udhu barab al-nas, huwa Allahu ahad. And this is some of the kufri statements, or the kufri statements he, he declared. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala punish him with what he deserved. So, and Imam al-Qayyim rahmatullah spoke about this because they, one of the sahaba came to Ubay ibn Ka'ab radiallahu anhu, and he said, now these two surahs, قُلْ أَعُوذُ رَبِّ الْفَلَقُ قُلْ أَعُوذُ رَبِّ النَّاسِ Why we say قُلْ? So I asked the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, Uwai ibn Ka'ab said, I asked the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, shall we say only أَعُوذُ رَبِّ الْفَلَقُ أَعُوذُ رَبِّ النَّاسِ And the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, هَكَذَا أُنْزِلَتْ It's revealed like this. And the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he's revealing what Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala said to him. And the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he's honest in al balad in delivering what Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala delivered to him. Because he's not, if he's not honest, he was, will not say, Abasa wa tawalla. Because Abasa wa tawalla talks about the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He will not say, Ya ayyuha rasulu balligh ma unzil alaykim min rabbik. Oh, you Prophet, reveal what Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala ordered you. And there is some ayahs in the Quran talking to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. وسلم and asking him why you did that عف الله عنك لما أذنت لهم may Allah forgive you why you gave them permission if Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم wasn't honest in delivering what Allah سبحانه وتعالى revealed to him he will take all these eyes from the Quran and keep it to himself as unfortunately some Shia are saying that the Nabi صلى الله عليه وسلم he is not he didn't reveal everything and I read in one of their books that when Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam died, Jibreel Alayhi Salam came to Fatima and he found her, she was uh, ill and she was very, very sad because she lost the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Then Jibreel started to reveal surahs and ayahs every night he used to come to Fatima to just to give her company and reveal Quran to her. And this is what they call it Mus'haf Fatima. And they are saying <clears throat> or claiming that they asked 
الامام جعفر واتس المصحف واتس ذا ديفرنس بين ذا مصحف ذا بيبل ذي هاف اند مصحف فاطمه هي سيد ذا مصحف ذا بيبل هاف از نوت ايكوال تو ون ثيرد اوف وات مصحف فاطمه هاز سبحان الله سو so, النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم هي ديليفرد بلغ what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to him. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ الْفَلَقِ قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَادٌ قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ النَّاسِ قُلْ يَا أَيُّهَا الْكَافِرُونَ قُلْ يَا أَيُّهَا النَّاسُ إِنِّي رَسُولُ اللَّهِ إِلَيْكُمْ جَمِيعًا He delivered to these ayahs to us as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed it to him. So say, I seek refuge with the Lord of the doom. Now, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying to you, قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ الْفَلَقِ Say, I seek refuge with the Lord of the dawn. This means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala giving you the way of seeking protection. If you'd like to seek protection, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you the way, give you the tool you need to protect yourself. How? You say this. First, you say, قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ الْفَلَقِ Now, the Lord of the Dawn. Why the Lord of the Dawn? Not the Lord of any other thing. The Lord of the Sun or the Lord of the Moon. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used these things. The Lord of the Dawn, as many scholars uh, said about this, because the Dawn means the light, the clearness. Everything clear. Like Islam. Islam is clear. Islam, nur. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he spoke about the believers and the non-believers, he said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the wali, the friend of those who believe. The, he will take them from the zulumat, darkness, to the نور to the light والذين كفروا أولياءهم الطاغوت يخرجونهم من النور إلى الظلمات and the, the kafir the non-believers who is their friend الطاغوت الشيطان what they will do they will take them from the نور the light to the darkness so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here asking you to seek Allah's protection, the Lord of the doom. From what? Here in Surah Al-Falaq, from four things. And when you look at them, it is the four things, the, exter the four external things which can affect human being in their life. First, min sharri ma khala, from the mischief of created things. So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here said, min sharri ma khalaq, from the mischief of created things. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created everything. In some of these things, there is good, and in some of them, there is bad. So any them, any sin is sharr. Any sin comes from human beings is sharr. Any any harm comes from the human beings to the people is harm. Any uh, sharp. Anything comes from the animals against human beings also is sharp. Anything comes from the jinn against human beings also sharp. Any problem comes to you from any anything is sharp. So here the word min sharri ma khalaq covers everything you can think about. So you can imagine anything can happen to you. In this word, when you say min sharri ma khalaq, this means that you are asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Lord of the dawn, to protect you from all these shar. If it is from humans, from animals, from jinn, from insects, from anything. You see how strong this, this surah? 
just one word will protect you باذن الله from everything from the evil of everything the evil of everything سبحان الله الله سبحانه وتعالى created then Allah سبحانه وتعالى in the other three things he gave us details so ayah number two is covering all types of shark now ayah number three talks about details and ayah number four details and ayah number five details so the first one ومن شر غاسق إذا وقع from the mischief of darkness as it overspreads now what's the غاسق the غاسق darkness and another hadith uh, in in one of the hadith that the Nabi صلى الله عليه وسلم he was with خدي uh, with عائشة رضي الله عنها and he looked at the moon and he said to عائشة this is الغاسق so this is what we call الغاسق and in the tafsir in all the tafsir you will find the word the meaning of word غاسق الظلام ظلمة the darkness when it overspreads when it covers when it is totally dark now subhanallah here allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned to us that in the darkness there is shar is there shar in darkness yes all the shar or most of the shar committed in dark now these days you'll find the lights everywhere and these things but still the crimes most of the crimes happen at night now the discos and the pubs and these things when during the day at night and any any bad thing the people can think about will be committed at night subhanallah this is why nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam advised us when it is the sunset or the sun sets to cover the doors and cover the windows and also to get the children uh, uh, inside the house and also to cover the the pots and the cups and everything in in the house so because when the night starts then the shayateen subhanallah shayateen will be everywhere and in any town when you pass at night especially saturday night or friday night you'll find the shayateen everywhere and all types of them especially if it is hot like these days ومن شر غاسق اذا اذا وقب now the shayateen using the night for crimes but the believers using the night for tahajjud كانوا قليلا ما يهجعون كانوا قليلا من الليل ما يهجعون وبالاسحار هم يستغفرون when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described the believers that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted them jannah he said that they used to sleep a little bit at night and when it is ashar before fajr what they will do they make istighfar yastaghfirun so this is what the believers will do that they use this time when the, all the people are asleep or when the shayateen they are doing their work they are trying to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at that at that time then ayah, in ayah number four Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the nafathati fil uqad for the mischief of those who practice secret arts now nafathati fil uqad they are here talking about the witchcraft the magicians the sorcerers or the people who are practicing all these types of things and here said annafathat because some of them when they do the sihr what they do they do it and they blow in it so here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said annafathat they blow in in this uh, when they make the notes they blow they blow in, in them and sihr uh, or magic is something we believe that might happen to anyone and this surah and the other surah is a protection from it 
سو اني هاوس ذات قل هو الله احد قل اعوذ برب الفلق قل اعوذ برب الناس ريدين ات ان شاء الله ذير از نو سحر ويل افكت يو اند فور ذا هاوس ذا هو توتال هاوس اف يو ريد سوره البقره ان ذا هاوس ذن الشياطين ويل نوت انتر ذات هاوس فور ثري دايز سو الله سبحانه وتعالى جيف اس ذا بروتكشن اجينست ذا سحر اند Unfortunately, you'll find, especially in some communities, that the people all the time talking about sihr. Ah, this person has sihr on him, and sometimes if he is just ill, oh, maybe there is some sihr. And then instead of going to the Quran, what they will do? They will go into those who consider themselves sheikh, but unfortunately, they are not sheikh, because anyone who is using sihr to cure the sihr. He cannot be sheikh. He is using the jinn or different types or many of them, they are just cheaters. And you'll find them very poor, subhanallah, because all their money is absolutely haram. The cure is easy. If all the time you protect yourself by قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ عَدْ قُلْ عَدْ رَبِّ الْفَلَقْ قُلْ عَدْ رَبِّ الْنَاسِ And as we explained, Last week, protect yourself by ayat al kursi. Bismillah, no sihr will touch you, and no of these jinns can come next to you, because they run away when you say "Aaudu billahi min shaitan." So just imagine someone in the evening, in the morning, after every salah, he all the time reading these surahs. It will not affect them. The jinn, the sihr will affect the people who are away from Allah Subhanahu. Who are neglecting Allah? Who most of the time they are not tahir, for example. They don't know wudu or ghusl. They just live like the animals. They they have nothing about ghusl or wudu or tahara. They just their names are Muslims, but when it comes to practicing Islam, they have no idea about it.